For over a decade, the Burj Khalifa held the world spellbound, 828 meters tall, an untouchable icon. Now on Saudi Arabia's Red Sea coast, a new challenger is rising. A one-kilometer skyscraper planned to dwarf the Burj by 180 meters and costing up to $2 billion. After years of silence and abandoned floors, construction is racing ahead again, backed by Royal Ambition and Vision 2030. But can Jetta Tower truly shatter the record? Or will it become a billion-dollar monument to impossible dreams? The answer begins with a century-long race for the sky. In 1931, the Empire State Building claimed the title of the world's tallest, its spire reaching 381 meters above the streets of New York. For four decades, no other structure touched its height. Then, in 1973, Chicago's Willis Tower, better known as the Sears Tower, rose to 442 meters, pushing the limits of steel and ambition. The race had begun. By 1998, the twin Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur took the crown at 452 meters, their gleaming peaks signaling a new era of global competition. Only six years later, Taipei 101 soared to 508 meters, a bold leap for the skyline of Taiwan. But in 2010, a new giant changed the rules. The Burj Khalifa shot up in Dubai, not just edging past its rivals, but vaulting an astonishing 320 meters higher than the previous record, topping out at 828 meters. For over a decade, the Burji stood alone, its record seemingly unbreakable. The quest to build higher has always been about more than concrete and steel. Each new tallest building is a statement of national pride, engineering prowess, and a city's place on the world stage. To hold the record is to capture global attention, to declare that your city, your country, leads the future. Now with Jetta Tower aiming for a full kilometer, 1,008 meters planned, the world is witnessing not just another step in the race, but a leap that challenges the very boundaries of what is possible. The stakes have never been higher, and the world is watching to see who will own the sky next. Jetta Tower is designed to push human engineering to new heights. Its planned summit stands at 1,008 meters, making it the first structure to cross the one-kilometer threshold. The slender, tapering form rises from a 60-meter-wide base, narrowing as it climbs toward the sky. The tower's signature Y-shaped footprint is not just for aesthetics, it helps distribute wind loads and stabilizes the structure against the powerful gusts that sweep in from the Red Sea. Inside, the tower is stacked with a mix of high-profile uses. The lower floors are devoted to luxury retail and grand lobbies, drawing visitors and residents into the heart of Jeddah Economic City. Above, premium office spaces rise, followed by layers of high-end residences and near the top, a Four Seasons Hotel offering sweeping views across the city and coastline. At 644 meters, the world's highest observation deck will give visitors a vantage point nearly 90 meters above Burj Khalifa's top deck at 555 meters. The tower will contain 167 floors, four more than its Dubai rival. The project comes with a price tag estimated between $1.5 and $2 billion, though costs may rise as construction advances. The architect behind the vision, Adrian Smith, also designed Burj Khalifa. Jeddah Tower's ambition is to redefine what is possible, marrying architectural elegance with a program that blends commerce, luxury living, and tourism into a single vertical city. Beneath Jeddah Tower, a hidden forest of concrete piles drives more than 60 meters into the earth, over 270 shafts anchoring the building in a mix of sand and rock. This foundation is the only way to support the weight of a vertical city pressing down on land just steps from the Red Sea. Above, 
the skeleton rises from a core of more than 80,000 cubic meters of high-strength concrete, poured in stages and locked together with steel outriggers. Each floor climbs higher, but the real challenge comes from the sky itself. At one kilometer, wind speeds can top 200 kilometers per hour, threatening to twist and sway even, even the most rigid structure. The tower's Y-shaped footprint and tapering profile are not just for looks, they split and redirect the wind, breaking up dangerous vortexes that could cause the building to vibrate or bend. Engineers predict that in the strongest storms, the top of the tower could move as much as one to two meters. Occupants will not feel it. Deep inside the upper floors, a tuned mass damper, a massive carefully calibrated weight, will counteract each gust, absorbing energy and keeping the tower steady. Every element from foundation to spire is designed to outsmart nature's forces, making height possible where it once seemed impossible. Moving people and resources up a vertical city nearly one kilometer tall demands more than just speed. It requires a complete rethinking of how buildings breathe, function, and stay livable. Jetta Tower will house 59 elevators, including double-deck cars, with some express lifts expected to travel over 660 meters in a single run. These elevator shafts cut through the heart of the structure, connecting ground-level luxury with the world's highest observation deck. At peak speed, the fastest cars are designed to reach 10 meters per second, rivaling the quickest lifts on the planet. But at this scale, traditional steel cables become too heavy and prone to stretching, so engineers are turning to ultra-light carbon fiber ropes for the longest runs. Even then, no single elevator will travel the full height. Passengers will switch at sky lobbies, a system borrowed from other supertalls but pushed to new extremes here. The challenge does not stop with people. Water must be pumped hundreds of meters upward, split into zones with powerful booster pumps and backup systems to keep pressure safe and steady. Fire suppression lines, air conditioning, and electrical risers all share the core. Each system zoned and reinforced to handle the strain of height and desert heat. The facade itself is engineered to resist salt, glare, and temperature swings. Layers of advanced glass and corrosion-resistant materials shield interiors from the harsh Red Sea climate. Above it all, the spire houses communications gear and mechanical systems, capping the tower's vertical lifelines. Every system must work in concert with redundancy built in, because at this height, a single failure can have consequences all the way to the ground. Work at Jetta Tower ground to a halt in early 2018, leaving a concrete skeleton exposed to the Red Sea's salt air and desert heat for nearly seven years. Engineers faced a daunting task when construction resumed in January 2025. Before a single new floor could rise, teams drilled core samples from the existing structure, testing for compressive strength, chloride content, and micro cracks caused by years of exposure. Ultrasonic scanners and ground-penetrating radar mapped every slab and column. In areas where salt had penetrated too deeply or where surface cracking threatened durability, workers cut out damaged concrete and replaced it with new, high-strength mixes. Protective coatings were reapplied to vulnerable steel and concrete. Two main cranes, corroded by years of inactivity, were dismantled and swapped for new models capable of lifting loads to unprecedented heights. Every piece of old equipment, from concrete pumps to temporary elevators, was either upgraded or replaced. Only after these repairs and upgrades did the tower's core begin to climb again but the lost years had already pushed completion beyond the original target. Jetta Tower stands at the intersection of ambition and economic reality. The project anchors a $20 billion district meant to transform Jetta into a global destination, but the price of prestige is steep. Vision 2030 puts tourism and international investment at the center of Saudi Arabia's economic future 
betting that a record-breaking tower will draw millions of visitors and signal new confidence to global markets. The payoff is potentially huge. Burj Khalifa observation decks alone generate up to $500 million in annual revenue, a figure that eclipses most luxury hotels. If Jeddah Tower can attract even a fraction of that, the economic argument strengthens. But there is no guarantee. Regional competition is fierce. Dubai Creek Tower remains stalled. And other Gulf mega projects compete for the same pool of investors and tourists. Economists warn that without a critical mass of surrounding development and steady visitor flow, even the world's tallest building can struggle to justify its cost. The race for height is also a race for relevance, and the finish line is far from certain. Today, Jeddah Tower rises unfinished but already rewriting the limits of ambition. As global cities chase icons to prove relevance, the real test isn't height, but endurance. In a world shifting beyond oil, the tallest structures now compete with the urgency of transformation itself.